kind of cool to be able to sit and, t- and chat about her music with people who love her music and love to play her music. And I always uh, uh, admired the work, the work that you do after seeing it on the Facebook, uh, Joni Mitchell Facebook page. You're always really studious and learning a song every week, it seems like, and posting. Oh, it seems, it's gotten more so that way that I've gotten. And I think sometimes the songs pick me instead of me trying to figure out what to do next. All of a sudden, something will just pop into my mind. So that's that's really nice that Joni guides us or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good. It's good. So I'm. Um, I think I'll, I I will. St- I lost the coin toss. So <laughs> or I won the coin toss. So I'm going to go first. Um, and the song is actually one from from kind of the later years um, in the 80s. Um, and I. Th- which record is, is it wild things run fast i don't know it's 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 a song called dream flat tires which i always really enjoyed it's a fun band tune but it's also fun to play solo jazz especially that era she was so smoky and cool and you know i like that yeah i think she was successful at everything personally i don't have an unfavorite period myself yeah yeah nice so of course i'll go totally in the other direction i think i'm going to do <clears throat> the longest hardest one just get it done <laughs> and it came from court and spark which is uh one of the greatest songs i think she ever wrote was down to you mm. i'm gonna try to pull that off right now Great. Okay, so here we go. Everything comes and goes 
That was so beautiful. That's really, that's quite a beautiful song. One of my friends wants me to learn that, and then that's like, wow, that's an epic. <laughs> that might take me a while. You did a beautiful yeah, job. It's fun to work out that orchestral middle part on the piano, though. That is fun. <laughs> yeah, it's really beautiful. So I love this song, Chelsea Morning, because it just is so evocative of her early fresh style when she was, you know, in her 20s, probably living right. in Chelsea, New York. And in the 60s, and you just can you can see an apartment filled with colored beads and paisley and, you know, cinnamon incense and just the bustling of activity of just all this this um, this artistic creative essence of of songwriters and poets and painters and how, what a great time to be alive, you know. And even though I think she discounts this song as being like the work of an ingenue, I think I read that somewhere. I think it's really refreshing. I love it. I love it too. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get started. This as much as you do because it's so evocative of New York and just it's such a happy sounding song and and the, the words I my favorite line uh, ever is the sun poured through like butterscotch and stuck to all my senses yeah. that's just so delicious but, uh, anyway when Hajira came out I really related to it because Joni to me is, is she's kind of a, a brilliant spirit but she's kind of a tortured person uh, I feel like she was always a little cursed because 
she can be accepted by men as an equal, and yet she wanted to have these passionate love affairs being a Scorpio, you know, she, and I think she was always bumping heads maybe with some of these guys because she was a threat, and she was so good, you know. Oh, yeah. She was strong. How could, she, how could she not, you know? I mm -hmm. mean, uh, I mean, at least David Crosby and Nash realized how, to, how gifted she was and gave her her due, but I think it intimidated a lot of people as well, you know. And she wasn't exactly soft-spoken about how yeah. she felt. And so she paid the price in a way, and that was <clears throat> the era we lived in. But I can relate to how she feels like never really loved. And I mean, I feel like that sometimes, even though you know, I'm happily married and all that. I feel like sometimes maybe I've, I've related to her a lot, and I know a lot of people do. And that's one of her amazing gifts is that she, she's universal. So many people. Yeah, I think when I, what I love and what made me, what gave me more freedom uh, to play her music and, you know, because I don't look like her, I don't necessarily sound like her, but I, I love how my instrument, um, you know, uses her songs as a vehicle, you know, to express myself. And I think she said somewhere that, you know, if you hear my <laughs> music, if you hear my songs and you here think about me that's think what you about said. me I mean, you missed the point you know but if you're my or, or i didn't do my job because yeah, i didn't do my job it was something like that but if you if you see yourself then that's that's the point and i feel like i see myself through her songs and when i play them i i i just um i just feel better <laughs> i don't know what it is it's like and i love playing my own songs too so um, but i agree i know what you're saying because well her material is so fabulous that how could you not feel good when you're playing it you know but there are songs you know that that resonate with you more than others because of personal experience and i'm, I'm going to play one of those later you know that, yeah. uh, and tell that story of like how this is me you know the song is me growing up for sure <laughs> so hijira was really i mean i know so many people just love the song but i just uh it's not hijira it's uh the amelia but oh yeah amelia form, so i thought i'd do that on the piano
songs, didn't I? <laughs> that is a lot. I was remembering how many verses it's that seven was. seven verses, I know. Song for Sharon is uh, nine verses. She's just so Wow. <laughs> yeah. uh, Coyote had a lot of verses. No, that was beautiful. That was beautiful to hear on piano. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I like that. Um, well, shoot. What shall I do? I think maybe I'll do... Um, the song that I mostly relate to, I was going to say on Amelia, I, not that it's the same exact subject matter, but it reminds me of a song that I wrote about a female pilot who gets lost up in the clouds and crashes and a glacier in Alaska. It would be a fun one, you know, on another concert to play some originals that are inspired, you know, that remind you of Joni's music. Mm -hmm. I know we had talked about doing that. Yeah, um, it's fun. But this next song is uh, its called Blonde in the Bleachers. Mm -hmm. And I love it because I grew up in the 70s and I went to every rock concert at all the famous venues um, at the time, like the Forum and the Long Beach Arena and the Swing Auditorium. And I went to the um, California Jam, you know, in 1974, sat, in the, sat with all those people, crazy people, <laughs> spent the night there. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, it was... I, went, I didn't go to Woodstock, but I went to Altamont. That's yeah. kind of true. There you go. So, you know, I never needed to do that again. But the yeah. point being is that I had such a crush on um, all those rock and roll musicians, and I loved musicians, and I loved the energy of the music. And, um, you know, growing up and becoming one uh, and living my life as one has been such a amazing journey. Um, and this song just reminds me of being, you know, 16, 15, 16 years old and sitting in the forum looking at Robert Plant, you know, on stage. And we know when they look over your direction, you think for sure they're looking at you. <laughs> Hi, I'm right here. Um, and I had, uh, I had pretty light blonde hair at the time. And I just like, oh, she was singing my song. Um, I love this song, too. So I'm glad you're doing it. <laughs>
I love all that improvising that you do at the end. I've, I've heard you do that a couple of times in your songwriters living room showcase. Uh, so thank that's you. Fun. Really thank really you. Fun. It's, it's one of our, um, when we do it with the band, you know, for our, our shows, um, I started off and then my guitar player, uh, plays the sitar. <laughs> he goes crazy. <laughs> And it's really fun. It's just a fun song to play solo. You can lose yourself in it, and then it's a really fun song to jam out on as well. So thank you for that. All right, what are you going to play? Well, I, I want to figure out how to uh, lace some little story into this, although it, you know, it's just from the time period. I think Conversation came from Ladies oh, yeah. of the Canyon. Right? I love this. I also want to do Ladies of the Canyon, but we'll see if I, if the, how the time goes, because this one is easier to play. <laughs> Well, well, we can always do this again. I'm I'm totally game to to like this to have another very fun. another session. I wanted to tell you my little mini story. This is actually true, and some people might get a kick out of this. Um, so, you know, it was early '70s, and I I had a big crush on Steve Still. Speaking of the blonde and the bleachers, and uh, I always pic picture her singing it to him for some reason, even though I know they weren't really romantically involved. But I. Uh, I really, really had a crush on Steve Stills, and I loved Joni Mitchell because I was singing her stuff. But meanwhile, I ran into this girl one day in the donut shop, which was <laughs> a place in Isla Vista where UCSB was, and this girl with long red hair, she comes up and goes, oh, my name's Sunshine, and I'm a witch. And uh, I have a, I painted a picture of Graham Nash, like off the front of that first Crosby Stills Nash album, and it's really good, and I want to get it to him. I go, I'm your girl, and we'll, we'll figure it out. So uh, I went over to her house and looked at it, and it was really good. It was an oil painting of him in that big fuzzy coat, you know, that uh, mm -hmm. hood. So we figured out how to go down to L.A., and it's a long story, but we ended up uh, going into Warner Brothers Studios where they were rehearsing on a set for uh, They Shoot Horses, Don't They? Maybe oh. The horror movie. Yeah. And it said, how long will they last? And this was the uh, configuration of the... Crosby, Stills, Nash and & Young, and Dallas Taylor on, I think it was drums, and I forget who on the bass, but, so they were practicing, we got to go in with all those guys and show, oh, Graham how Nash fun, and Katie, and he's like, wow, did he like, like it, Elliot Roberts, yeah, Elliot Roberts says, no, you girls have to go now, and David Crosby walked in late, and he turns around, does this big double take on me, I'm like, oh no, because I didn't care about him at all, <laughs> It turns out that I bear a resemblance to the girl that he was in love with who got killed in the car accident. Just oh. Kitty and hey, Kitty. Hey, Kitty. Hi, Kitty. <laughs> right it's a girl, perfect right? cue. Yeah. Her name's, a boy. her name's Binks. Anyway, uh, so I get to, you know, I got to meet them and uh, hang out. We went up to Joni's house with, to give Graham a ride up there, but she was gone because we had a fight. Oh. <laughs> but just my luck. She yeah. wasn't there, but I got to go in her house, and it was so magical. And wow, magical. that's so cool. That's great. So, anyway, this reminds me of uh, that era, right? All right, I'm going to mute. <laughs> Okie dokie. Put me big, put me big on the screen. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. Love is 
She keeps him guessing, but I know she keeps him down. She speaks in sorry sentences, miraculous repentances. I don't believe her. Tomorrow he will come to me, and he'll speak his sorrow endlessly, and he'll ask me why. tune so fast that's the one thing about the tuning i could hear it yeah. oh no, it, no it's good it gave it a little effect it's like but it wasn't yeah it gives a little uh, natural little natural chorus thing <laughs> no it's fine that's pretty. Right? your voice sounds so pretty on that we were talking about like some questions you had prompted it you know have some good ideas for conversation starters and this probably knocks out two of them um one is, I, in 1993, I had just recorded my first record, and it was my first original record. And I was yeah. super proud, you know, yeah. of the songs, and it was just a big deal, and I put so much love into every, every one of them, and they were just my heart and soul. And, um, you know, I painted the cover, you know, and I'm, I'm an artist as well, so oh, I hear I'm a songwriter yeah. and an That's artist. Amazing. And I paint this, like, red coyote up on a giant lone rock, and... You know, it's on the cover of the record. And because much to my record labels, you know, like horror, they wanted to put my face on it, of course, you know. And I'm like, no, I want to put this painting. And um, so I meet her at a birthday party for Don Henley. So I happened to be good friends with his band. We'd all been on the road together. We're all friends. So I, I got invited. And it was a huge party. It was like 300 people in his house in, in the Hollywood Hills. And... Um, all, but a lot of different people there, of course. But I'm sitting across at the table outside, and I'm eating, and I look across me, and it's Joni Mitchell. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's Joni Mitchell, you know, with her, like, handler, you know, her, her assistant. And she's just really kind of, you know, looking around and eating, and I'm thinking, now's my chance, like, to talk to her about my record. And just, like, I feel like we're sisters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, I didn't get too exuberant. I kind of felt the water out. But I was like, yeah, I'm a singer, songwriter. I just made a record and, you know, I, my own songs. And I painted the cover. And as I'm talking, I saw her eyes just drift off somewhere else. And I just went, and she's gone. She's like, I got to find Dawn. I have a birthday present for him. And she got up and, like, walked away mid -sent in the middle of my sentence. And I was like, Aww. You know, you got to sympathize with her, though, because how many people come up to her oh, saying things like that? You know? I had to laugh that I even had the audacity to even speak to her. Well, I did. I, did, I, did I, I think it's funny. I think it's so cute. I oh. went and saw Crosby, Stills, Nash and & Young. Oh, that's and cool. then I went backstage after, you know, because I know the band, right? And uh, I was sitting there, I was taking it all in, and, and Joni was standing right next to me talking to somebody else, and then she looked over. And she had on the look of this 
two piece like a skirt and a blouse that was made out of burlap and it was just really yeah. unusual <laughs> i looked up at her and i said wow i really like your i really like your outfit you know and she, i didn't even say hi i'm in the, you know blah, anything i just was why should i tell her anything about me so i said uh I really like your outfit. She goes, oh yeah, I made it myself. So I mean, it was really cool. She's making her burlap clothes, and yeah, she's always had that sense of style. You see her unusual, just an unusual dresses. sense of style. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I wouldn't. I don't like the way she dresses on me, but it looks great on her. You know, so. Well, I like so, the early stuff. You know, I liked her yeah. turquoise well, yeah. and dresses and things like that. I like well, the, the pink green, dress. Uh, the thing on uh, for the roses, that green velour outfit or velvet outfit with the boots. I, I dig that.
And we are as stars We are Psychedelic. Oh, that's jazzy. It's very cool. Very cool. Oh, the bells are tolling. So that's my bells that they're tolling every 15 minutes. Really, the music has inspired me so very, very much as an artist, as a person. And uh, again, it, playing it just makes me really happy. So. And yeah, I know I hear you because, you know, even though I tell that little vignette about how I actually did talk to her for a minute. People always say, you know, I really want to meet her and I wish I could talk to her for a while. And I, I really feel like there's nothing to really say because, first of all, she says it all through her music to us. And we know her so well, whereas there's so many of us. She doesn't need to know everyone. She just needs to know. And she doesn't even need to know that we love her music because it's obvious. And I'm so yeah. there's really nothing to say to Joni except thank you. And yeah, and I, which, so like I said, we're all just cruising through this world doing the best we can. We don't always get it right, but as we close, this is the last day of 2020. We've had a really, really difficult year, but in some ways, but in other ways, um, we've been had a chance to find some peace, hopefully, and be introspective and be grateful for what we have. And I'm super grateful for the people, the things in my life, and the, the journey that I've I've reached at the end of this year. And I wish everybody a super happy 2021 and where we get beyond these challenges and start to get out and be able to be together again face to face and uh i'll still be here doing these online concerts too <laughs> but it'll be fun to get out to the clubs again so uh, have i muted yet okay i just wanted to add to that yeah happy new year and he he it's just wonderful that this pandemic as horrible as it's been has uh, led us to do a lot of online music. And so I feel like so many more people are having an opportunity be, to be seen and heard. I agree. don't get gigs and it, it's wonderful, you know, and I'm glad that it led me to you because I feel there's, I have a lot of connection to you just somehow. Yeah. You know it now. 
never has been easy. Whether you do, you do not resign. Whether you travel the breadth of extremities or skip to some straighter line. Now here's a man and a woman sitting on a rock. never get over it you know i know i know hmm. and then we could spend our whole life just learning her songs right would you be okay with me <laughs> i'll throw in a few of my own there i'll be really happy <laughs> but um god bless you for asking me to do this kiki i think it was you but i mean yeah. what, a, what an honor and a privilege all right yeah. everybody happy new year and uh black cats rule baby <laughs>